Good morning. Yeah, I've been, I've been back a few months, I mean a few weeks, just long enough to get my allergies back. <laughs> I'll tell you. And I'm on some drugs right now that um, make me a little jittery. I'm not usually very nervous, but I feel like this, you know, I don't do caffeine even. So a little bit of something just kind of uh, gives me the, the willies in a, after a fashion. At any rate, I'm glad to be here, glad to have you all here, and to be able to talk to you a little bit today. Um, I'm going to probably speak kind of fast, because with the new member thing and what I have to say, I've got to go, 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 I guess. So first I want to tell you a little story about how Grace came to me in this last week or so. Uh, I had heard about the topic back in, I think it was June or so, wasn't it, Bonnie, when we were talking about the topics. And this is supposed to be the month of the theme being, you know, what is our true nature in the world that works for everyone. And I had decided, well, grace was going to be my topic. Now, normally, I, don't, I watch the videos at pretty much the end of the week about, that I'm speaking, because I'm supposed to kind of like wrap it up and recap everything. And, uh, so I normally don't watch them until it's almost time for me to finish doing what I was going to do with my talk and then see what everybody else had to say about the theme. And I got a note from Larry on the email, from Larry Pass. How, shout out to Larry, who's in San Diego today, but I'm sure he's going to watch this video. And he sent me an email, and he said, did you happen to watch uh, Randy Granger's talk? Uh, it was really, really good. And I wrote him that, you know, I normally don't watch the talks until right before I'm ready to prepare mine. And then sometimes I get a little thrown off by the fact that somebody stole my thunder or, you know, other things have already been said. And so that's what I wrote to Larry. Well, then I'm like resisting taking, you know, God's grace through Larry to say, watch the videos. The whole weekend, last weekend, then earlier this week, I finally said, okay, I'm going to watch them. I, I, I don't watch them. So I watched Bonnie's and then I watched Randy's and then I watched Bonnie's other one too this last week again. But, um, I saw, oh, shoot, Randy's talking about grace, just like I was going to. Then, so, but, it, but I had enough time to get over myself and say, well, you know, instead of changing what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pile on, you know. I'm just going to add more grace to it because I loved what Randy had to say, and I thought some of what he wanted to talk about, I had just fit perfectly with what I wanted to talk about. So the title of my talk today is God's Grace is at Hand, and I'm going to sort of anthropomorphize things with grace today because we're going to anthropomorphize God and ourselves in grace. God is at hand, always, always, always available to us, always near us. And you all have talked with Bonnie's talks and with Randy's talk, and he asked you all to contribute from the audience even a little bit about what did you think grace was or what is grace. So today you're going to get my take on what is grace. You all talked about love and compassion, and someone I think even had said long-suffering, um, that these are elements of grace. But my take on it is that grace comes through mysticism. Grace arrives for me through mysticism. When I'm willing to do what Bonnie talked about today in the new member orientation is that to know that God is all there is and all there is is God. And to have that mystical approach to seeing God in everything so that I am reminding myself that my grace is at hand because God's hand is in anything and everything that is at hand right now. And as long as I can hold that thought and remember that, then I'm in pretty good shape of knowing that God's grace is right here with me, as me, for me, through me, around me. And I see grace as a sort of a combination of a couple of my little bumper stickers that you've probably heard me say before, that there ain't no spot where God is not. And ain't that odd, that's God. Now, the latter one may be something that I haven't spoken much about here or, or illuminated in any fashion. But to me, grace is not only something that we perceive at the moment as being good, but grace also can come to us as something that we weren't expecting, something that we didn't ask for, something we weren't wishing for. See, now remember that we're, always, we're not always going to get what we're looking for, but we're always going to get what we're looking from. So sometimes grace shows up as the opportunity for the lesson. And when it happens, like whoosh, comes right in, unexpectedly, a surprise, out of the blue, whether I perceive it as a good thing that happened or as a not-so-good thing that happened, I'm willing to accept that this is the grace of God. 
probably doing for me what I could not do for myself, doing for me what I hadn't been able to do through myself yet. So to me, the, it's a combination. Grace is a combination of both of those things. It's the seeing that God is everywhere, that there ain't no spot where God is not, and remembering that, and then sometimes being reminded that ain't that odds, that's God. Whatever is going on that seems out of the ordinary, unusual, or a surprise. So God's grace is something that, in those moments, for me, takes my breath away. And then that grace becomes the breath of God in me. I take that level to the divinity and recognize that God is breathing me. And I can take that breath and feel just a little bit of what Reverend Sandy calls wiggle room. Just enough wiggle room to shift. Just enough space to change in. To be willing to see it differently. To have that opportunity to say, oh, God's there too. Oh my gosh, God's there too. It is by the grace of God that X happened or Y is here, whatever the circumstance may be, that it is because of the grace of God that is at hand that I'm able to see God's hand in everything. So I was reminded when I was first thinking about this topic of grace of uh, the Ricky Byers song. You guys know Ricky B.B., right? Ricky Byers Beckworth, Beckwith, excuse me. Well, you may know the song that you've heard here even, perhaps, I release and I let go. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. Well, a lot of times it's not done with the intro that's there. So you may not have heard the intro before, which I'm not going to sing for you because it's like way over jazz with Ricky Beebe sings it. But it says that there was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all myself. I didn't know the love of God was sufficient. I didn't know the grace of God was at hand. Then it talks about, and now I see the light. Then she goes into the I release part that I just, that I just did for you. And I also thought, when I was thinking about this grace, that almost any time that I speak to Chip Frank on the telephone, you can raise your hand if you know Chip Frank. Chip is the uh, widower of the late Reverend Candy Smith Frank, who used to be the minister here and was my first science mind minister. And when I say, well, how, how's life, Chip? How's life treating you? He says, oh, I'm just remembering that God is right at the end of my fingertips. Or he will say, I'm just knee deep in grace. That the grace of God is what he's being reminded of and remembering because of whatever the challenges are, he's choosing to shift that from the negative to the positive, that it's all a part of God's grace. And when Chip says that about that, I just realized that the grace of God is at my fingertips, no farther out than my fingertips. I always kind of picture in my mind that uh, iconic painting of Michelangelo of man reaching and God reaching and the fingertips meeting. And I always think about that. And it just fills me with joy to think about this connection that we have with spirit and life, that life is good because life is God, Ruana. Where'd you run ago? She's here somewhere, right? There she is. Thank you for your song. Life is good because life is God. And life's in our corner because God's in our corner. That's the grace of God. As, uh, as Doug read, that uh, grace and beauty are the cornerstone of reality. And that's the reality as we choose to see it because there's no reality except the one I'm choosing to see or that you're choosing to see. So now kind of rolling back to uh, Reverend Randy's talk. For those of you who were here, you'll remember this, but those of you who weren't, it'll be a little, re it'll be renewing instead of refreshing it. <clears throat> but the fingertips, how many fingertips do we have on our hands? Five. G-R-A-C-E. So Randy gave us a little tool, an acronym, is what they call it, for a word that would be represented by each of those letters, the G-R-A-C-E. And when I saw that, I thought, it's five, it's five, it's fingertips, it's right there in my hand. So the G was for give, the R is for receive, the A for accept, the C for choose, 
and the E for empathize. Those are the words that Randy taught us. Me on the video, you hope, here in, the, in person. But I'm going to give you my take on those words. I don't remember exactly what all he might have said about the words, but I have my own version of what I want to choose to use that acronym to remind me of, that God is at my fingertips. G-R-A-C-E, the grace of God is at hand. So for me, the give is I have to have it in order to give it. I come out of the 12-step tradition that says you have to have it before you can give it away. So what I am wanting to do is to worry not about the appearances, the evidence of the things that are the facts ahead of me, but to hold in my heart and my soul to be that soul shine that Trevor was singing about, to be that soul shine for others, to give grace away, that we are the eyes, the hands, the arms, the legs, the mouth of God, the spirit on earth, as Karen Drucker's song says. We are the voice of spirit on earth. And all we do and all we are is a blessing to the world. So let's go out and be the blessing. Be the soul shine. Give that grace to others. <coughs> Excuse me. And I also think that when it comes to receiving, um, I believe that what we are going to receive from life is a function of what we believe about life. If we believe that life is good, that life is in our corner, that we are the beautiful you then that's what we will receive. So the way I teach it is that, you know, we perceive after we've believed, and it's this, it's this belief, perceive, that brings us to the equal sign. That's what we receive. So if I'm going to receive grace, I have to believe that it's there. I have to hold in my ideal the possibility of the miracle. And then if there is no way <coughs> that I can get there, then I have to be willing on some level to pray to choose to get there. That any limiting belief that I have that is causing me to perceive and to receive out of that belief is pinching off God's grace. Just like the rheostat on the, on the lights back here dims the lights, pinches off the electricity in order to dim the light. Any limiting belief that I have that keeps me away from the ideal of possibility is going to be limiting my ability to have God's grace and to give it out after I've received it in order to give it. We are the faucet, not the water. I don't want to keep turning the faucet off or turning the faucet down. I want that faucet to be open and free. I want to be in the flow. And I want that for all of us in the world that works for everyone, where grace and truth are the cornerstone of reality, as Doug read to us. So the A is for accept, G-R-A. The A is for accept. Now, acceptance is one of my biggest challenges. I don't know if that works the same way for any of you all, but I have the, to remind myself almost every day about something that happens of what used to be page 449 in the big book <coughs> of Alcoholics Anonymous before they uh, reprinted it, which is that acceptance is the key to all my problems today. Acceptance is the key to all my problems today. <coughs> and to accept what is, is. And that, that to accept that that reality that I'm seeing is really the truth and beauty that is the cornerstone of the reality. Not what I'm thinking, not what I'm willing to look at for the appearances or the conditions, but to go right through to the truth of the spiritual aspect of what it is that I'm observing and choose to see God in it. Choose to see the hand of God in whatever is at hand. That the grace of God is right at my fingertips, at your fingertips, and in, out, round, and through, and for all of what it is that is happening. In The Course in Miracles, there's a quote that um, is often repeated by Wayne Dyer, so a lot of people think it comes from him, but <coughs> excuse me, it comes from Course in Miracles. It says, if you knew who walks beside you, there would never be any cause for fear. So when I'm in the middle of something that I'm not accepting, I have to recognize it's my resistance, it's my fear, it's my judgment over, I don't want it to be the way it is. I don't want to accept the way it is. 
This is not in my agenda. I didn't have this plan. This is not my idea. And get over myself, right? So can we get over ourselves and just let it go? As Ricky Beebe's song says, let it all go. And let spirit run my life. <coughs> Excuse me. I told you I was back long enough to get the allergies here. <coughs> so the C is for choose. Or choice, I think the way Randy put it, but I'm... I'm choosing to put them all in verbs. I like the idea of action rather than nouns. So I choose. Will I be able to choose to see it differently? Will I be able to choose to remain awake? I choose peace instead of whatever it is that's appearing in front of me that is not at the moment allowing me to remember that life's in my corner that the cornerstone is reality as truth and grace. And have that little bit of wiggle room, that shift, that, that space where I can shift and change and say, okay, I, su- I choose to see this differently. I choose to see peace instead. I choose to be different in this moment than might have been my first reaction. I always try to remind myself, don't do, the, don't do or say the first thing that's on your mind. You're not enlightened enough yet to have that come out right, you know. So the E stands for empathize. And empathy is not sympathy. Empathy is a way of stepping into the other person's shoes. So I see empathy as something where I can get there if I can go to my divine self. And whatever it is that's happening, whoever it is that's in front of me, whatever the circumstances may be, I can choose differently, and I can be empathetic with the people, places, and things, including myself, that are involved. You know, Einstein said that the one thing he wanted was to learn to think like God thinks. And I believe that if I choose to think like God thinks in that moment, I can get to empathy. If I ask myself the question, now what might be God thinking about this person or X, you know? that I'm not thinking, or turn it around and say, and what is God thinking about it that I'm not? Can that shift me? Can that hold me at a different space? Can I see this other circumstance as God's hand in it? Can I see this other person as an innocent child of God? Can I get through the political season? (laughs) With empathy. So what am I thinking that God is not? And what is God thinking that I'm not? And can I remold that thought process into this place where I can see the, the voice in the hands of God in whatever the other is that's going on out there? Yelanya Van Zandt teaches us that everyone is and says and does, however it is he says and does, because that's who they are at the level of information they have at that time. So it's up to now, I'm only going to be doing my best, and up to now, that other person is only doing his or her best, because that's all we know. Until we go out and get more information, like you get from classes and workshops and coming here and interchanging your experiences and ideas with one another, We're stuck with the information we came to it with. And and I don't know about you guys, but in my world, that that could be kind of dangerous, you know? It's not not always the best level of information that I have. So we have these opportunities to see this grace at our fingertips, G-R-A-C-E, in the five five letters of the word, that grace is at hand. And the way I look at it is that if I were to stand like this, and think about the fingertips extended that my, my left hand is taking in, which would be your, your left over here, and my right hand is giving out. And if I have this grace at my fingertips, it can come in through here and it can go out through there. And you know, we've, we've been taught on the metaphysical level that this horizontal plane is the earth plane. This is the human plane that we're balancing against here. But this vertical that goes up from the earth mother to the heavens is the spiritual plane. 
and that we as human beings are that place where heaven and earth intersect. So this is the place where heaven and earth intersect, that the grace of God is here, that the spiritual uplifting, the cosmic downloading, all of that is going on through me, as me, for me, around me, and each of you as well. So if that little image helps to, to see grace at your fingertips, then that's, that's a good one too. I have that as my what. All those things that I gave you on the give, receive, accept, choose, and empathize. That's the what. That's the what of what I want to be, of what I want it to work like. The how is where we get to the other issues sometimes, right? And I wanted to share with you something that Marianne Williamson teaches um, all the time, but in her book, Everyday Grace, that was published in 2002. And um, <clears throat> it turned out that when I went to get this book, I am the excessive that you all know me to be. <laughs> so I have two of them. And this one is actually turned out to be a proof copy, this paperback one, that was gifted to Sandy Scott because Marion Williamson is a friend of hers and a former uh, colleague where they, uh, they uh, worked together at the Unity Church up in D the Detroit area in Warren, Michigan. At about the time that this book was published in 2002. So I decided I'm going to keep this one and I'm going to give this one to the church. So you can sell this in the bookstore if you want, Kathy, for, or we'll auction it off or whatever price you want to have. Come for it. So Ruana and I must have had the same idea today that we're going to give something back, right? Anyway, Marianne talks about a concept that she calls sending your love before you. Sending your love out ahead of you, starting your day with your meditation and prayer, and then visualizing or envisioning how your day is going to evolve by seeing it through the eyes of love. And if I can find the page here. She starts out her day with this, this kind of prayer that I want to share with you. She says, Dear God, I surrender my day to you and ask that it be used on your behalf. I go in the service of the light that the love in my heart might be of use to someone. I'm open to all the miraculous possibilities that could arise today, and I bless in advance. Send my love before me. I bless in advance everyone I will meet my goal is to experience the Spirit of God in everyone I see, that I might receive the gifts that are in store for me. May I be, do, and say according to your will. Amen. The Course in Miracles teaches the four questions. You, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say? And to whom? So those are all ideas about how to send your love ahead of you. And then... I've been reading in this book here by Ernest Holmes, which is a compilation of the works of Ernest Holmes that are little essays and small pamphlets and things that were put out in the early days um, of the uh, founding of Science of Mind. And what he has to say about something like this concept of Marianne's, of seeing your day, if you're going to go into a meeting, if you're going to go to work, that you see everyone from the point of view of love, that you see God's grace in all of it. And he says, and so shall we find that our word ever accomplishes that which is good and always prospers that thing whereto we have directed it. So direct your love out ahead of you during the day as a way of how to be that soul shine, how to be that grace, how to allow that grace to come and bless you with its gifts. So the five fingers there of grace, I hope you will take with you today. And I want to close with another little reading from what Marianne has to say. I don't think I had anything else there to say. So we're going to make it, guys. We're going to make the time wise. This is how we get to the grace in the world that works for everyone. We're sending our love out ahead of us. We're having the interactions and the soul shine opportunity come as our day evolves. It is everyday grace, as she says in the book. This is not just a one-off or when God chooses to favor me because 
I did something right or what. I mean, none of that is what really works in our philosophy, in our teaching. There's no spiritual payoff. So the world that works for everyone is where we show up as community. As they say that when the Buddha comes back, the Buddha will not come back as a person. The Buddha will come back as a community. And that's what we're about. We're about forming that community that is the world, that is the world that works for everyone. So she says that we continue to gravitate to tables where friends await us, where we continue to fall in love with one another, to know that we're blessed to have enchanted days, and we'll continue to fervently love our children and watch the miracles show up as they dance into adulthood. But there will be more. There will be more. And now, in an extraordinary moment of global transformation, we will do more than just love. We will join our love and harness our love. We will pool our resources of forgiveness and imagination and grace. And in time, we will collectively experience what physicists call the phase lock, that phenomenon in which individual oscillating rhythms that is, the heartbeats of many, many hearts in sync around the world, fall into a deep pattern of energetic resonance. And we will form this community of consciousness, a collective love that is humanity's next step in its evolutionary journey. And awe-filled grace will fill the skies and flood our hearts when we remember at last who we are to one another, and that is that we are one another. Thank you, God. Praise God. Amen. So it is. Namaste. Amen.